Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to wherever you are in the world, and welcome to today's conversation. And it is being hosted by myself, Enolia, and Sarah Jane. Say hello, Sarah Jane. Hiya. <laughs> and we have a special guest today, Dr. Linda Tello of Whole Hi, Earth Dad. Engineering. Yes, and we are going to be talking about the spiral today. So first of all, before we get started, I'd like um, Dr. Tello, or I'm going to say Linda. Yeah, Linda's fine. <laughs> yes. Why don't you introduce and just tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, great. Hi, everybody. My name is Linda, and my, I am a first-generation American. My family, they come from Colombia, and I have indigenous ancestry of the Pijaos from the Andes of Colombia. So th that's been really important, and I think that connection to the indigenous people of Colombia is something that's that it's, I've always sort of seen them in my heart since I was a child, and that's what's kind of kept coming up in me. So you can say it's been spiraling, doing these spirals in me, like going down, coming up, having me be more aware of my ancestry. Um, I have my background, my doctorate's in civil, environmental, and sustainable engineering. And I'm also an initiate into the Caro tradition of the Andes. So it's a little bit Beautiful. In, in brief. Thank you. Beautiful. And I wore my spiral today. Ah! <laughs> All right. Lots to talk about. Lots to talk about. So I'm going to start with you, Linda, and I'm just going to okay. ask you, how did the spiral enter your life? Okay. When did it first become noticeable? Um, I think the first time it came into my life. So I was new on the shamanic path and I did, I went to this conference, the um, Society of Shamanic Practitioners had a conference out of New Mexico and they took us out to the Bandelier National Monument and granted, they were like, we're going to build a medicine wheel. And I had no idea. I, I think I'd like seen a picture like the ones in Wyoming and stuff like that. But I was like, we're going to build that thing. It's so big. Um, we ended up building one, it was really nice because I was just kind of just, okay, I'll put a stone here, I'll put a stone there. I, I really had no idea what I was doing. And then they had us walk around it and they told us to walk around nine times and I, I just did what I was told. And then they started talking about how the water, because we would, I think it was the Colorado River that you see over there, how that scene is like the blood of Mother Earth, you know, by indigenous traditions all around the world. And that was like my first introduction but honestly, I had no idea that I was being introduced the second time that it was really direct. It was literally a statement. I did a shamanic journey. And when I came out of the journey, I, one of the things that I had was it. My spirit guides literally said, work with the spiral. And mm -hmm. I was like, OK, I, I really had no idea. I was like, uh, OK, L literally, I had no idea what that meant. But I didn't say no. And, and I said, OK after I was, you know, that confusion got out of the way, I said, show me the way. And I think after that, there have been s small and major things of the spiral. So that, that was my first introduction. That's beautiful. And Sarah Jane, would you like to share? First of all, I will say, uh, Timothy Elston says hello, because he's obviously watching. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, <Tim. laughs> Hello. I suppose I've never really thought about the spiral till now. But when you were sort of talking, I was thinking, now, isn't there something to do with other religions? And that is like a path that is laid out. And isn't that in some form of a spiral? Because I think a friend of mine um, has has written actually a story about the 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 the, 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 the this this spiral, this path this journey that you can go on, but it's just by walking it. And I think I remember seeing it on a program. Um, was it touched by an angel or something like that? And somebody was doing it. And so it, it comes in not, not just one culture, but mm -hmm. all cultures in mm -hmm. their own different ways. And okay, you, you were talking about your spiral necklace and earlier, and I was saying, well, I'm wearing my Mayan singing ball. And he said, yeah, it's, 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 it's a sphere. Yeah. It's all part and parcel. Part I've exactly. worn this for years. It was, it's a very different color to the when I bought it because of the amount of wear. And you think about your life and sometimes things just seem to come around. Mm -hmm. you. Yeah. And exactly. you, know, you hear people say, 
it keeps coming round till it has you've learnt that lesson. Exactly. I think that's a hard way of putting it yep. somehow, but it's a react differently and you can create a different outcome. That's all part of yes. life. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Well, for me, I think that um, the spiral was really, really, it hit me right in my face with the golden mean. So I had my degree in mathematics, right, for my bachelor's. Mm -hmm. And it really, really hit me when we were studying the golden mean and I was understanding the mathematical series and how this beautiful circle kept getting larger and larger and larger mm -hmm. and going and going and going and then being introduced into fractals and the understanding the repeating of fractals. So for those of you who don't understand what I mean, when you actually plot out like one plus two equals three, three plus two equals five, five plus three equals eight, you're actually, when you plot that out on a graph, you're actually creating a spiral, okay? And it's called the golden mean. And mm -hmm. so once that came into my sphere, into my view, and I started really, really understanding how many things include the spiral, mm -hmm. that's when I realized everything includes the spiral. Mm -hmm. And um, another doctor brought it home to me. His name is um, uh, Ross Hamilton created a book and I'm mm -hmm. fascinated with mounds. Okay. And mm -hmm. serpent yeah. mound is one of the particular mounds that I'm fascinated yes, with. Yes, I've been Ohio. there. It's really neat. It's really neat. And I was watching a lecture with Dr. Ross Hamilton. And when he sat there and he used the golden mean in the Fibonacci series and geometry to be able to show how the mounds correlated to the stars. Yes. I was like, that's it. I, I mean, I was just in, I was captured by it, you know, it was like, and then I wanted to look into fractals more and I wanted to look into everything more. So it, it for me, it was just like, that's when it really hit me. So understanding Wait. that, go ahead, yeah. Linda. I was going to say, when you say fractals, Anolia, I always think of a Hershey's chocolate bar because okay. it's the, the little tiny squares, you keep adding them and they actually make the giant chocolate bar. So that's how yes. I always think of fractals to try to explain it. You when you know, plus you can eat it, Beautiful. so that works too. <laughs> well, we're going to go right back to you two. There, well, there's a oh. question from, from Timothy, and he says, how does the spiral enter one's life? Ah. Um, well, the way it ends, well, you just have to be aware because you'll see it. But then I, I was going to share to Tim. Hey there. <laughs> He's a real good friend of mine. <laughs> um, it it kind of I literally fell, let's just say I fell into the spiral after it has pre presented itself to me where I had no idea what it was. I was like, oh, hey, what's up? Um, and then the second time where it told me to work with it and I was like, uh, okay, what do I do with this? The third time I literally fell into a spiral. So I had gone whitewater rafting with a friend of mine and, and I was like, eh, cause I, it's kind of dangerous kind of thing. Um, and it was supposed to be a class three rapids. Oh, yay, lucky me. It turned out to be a class five rapid. So as we're, yeah, exactly. So we're going down the way and it had rained a lot. So there's, it, this was like in the new river out in, a, it was West Virginia. And, and there was a giant boulder and there was a giant spiral that happened behind the boulder. And the, the, uh, the young lady, it was her first check ride to get certified. So I guess there was a, leadership failure and we literally went into the spiral and it's like I took a breath and the next thing I know I was plopped into this literally fell into the spiral and I I the experience I had was very interesting because I had listened to the safety briefing before because you know yeah. safety nerd like that and it said that when you fall into the water and it hits you to make like a ball so uh, Sarah Jane, you mentioned a sphere earlier, so that was the idea. So it was like make like a ball because when you don't have anything sticking out, then you can't get you don't get caught up. You know, like like you were saying, when things happen in your life, you go around and around. I think when we keep we get stuck in these parts is because it's it's like that analogy. We might stick out our hand like we're trying so hard to hang on to what's clearly changing that that's what causes your your wounding there. It's like you have to do like what the gentleman said, make like a ball so nothing gets caught. And then when I when I did that, it went from everything kind of feeling like I was in a washing machine, like, ah, oh, everything's like crazy, to I ended up kind of like the penny at the science fair, the, the science museum where you spin it and it goes all the way down to the bottom. That's basically what I became. 
So I surrendered. And when I surrendered, then the, the laminar flow of the river, it just took me out of that spiral. And then all of a sudden it was this beautiful, like calmness. Mm. And what was interesting is like the friend that I was with, he tried to fight the spiral. And so his experience was completely different than mine. So that, that was, I don't know, let you guys take it away. <laughs> I don't know if I answered your question, Tim. Sometimes you literally fall into it. <laughs> <laughs> and and Tim, Tim's being very active on the questions here. He really is, Okay. He, so <laughs> maybe, I don't know whether we should give this one to Anolia. And then he's got he's put another one above that as well. Okay. Let's <laughs> do <laughs> one at a time. Are fractals the sum of our being or experiences? <laughs> Mm. Mm. No, you so they, take are, they are the sum of both <laughs> I would say that they are the sum of, of both because we don't mm -hmm. separate our experiences and we don't separate our, our, our patterns so our, our experiences influences our patterns and until we learn that lessons um, we keep repeating and repeating and repeating until something within our nature or our experience finally changes. So we can make this surrender. a surrender. Yes. So you take an ex example like this. Um, my boss doesn't like me. Oh, it's her fault. I, I can't stand my boss, right? You get a new boss, right? Everything's great. And then all the way through, my boss doesn't like me. There's something wrong with her. Oh, it's all her fault again. How come this keeps happening to me? Then you get a new boss. And then the third time you go, my boss doesn't like me. What's my responsibility in this? What am I doing? Why am I attracting this? Okay, I have to own this. Okay, yeah, that's my personality. I did that. Okay, you know what, boss? You're right. I didn't do X, Y, and Z. Boom, all of a sudden it stops happening. Right? Mm -hmm. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Now I've created a new pattern, right? And then that new pattern will repeat until I learn something new until I learn something new. So I believe in explaining it in that regard, that the fractal in that regard, that's why we get repeating patterns and the new patterns and those repeat and the new patterns and those repeat because it's a sum of all. It's not a sum of any yeah. one thing, you know? And I'm gonna, and I'm so, gonna piggyback, oh, sorry. Oh. Go ahead, no, oh, absolutely. No. So I was gonna say, it's, you were talking about it being the sum. And so I, I learned recently, and, and I love this because I was literally looking at a fire when this happened. And the person, it was at a shamanic fire ceremony and we were looking at the fire and you know, like when you stare at it, you see like these little tiny little like blips of fire yes. that come off. That was how the person that I was with, they explained, we are that, like God, like the divine, the creator, you know, however you want to do it, um, is the whole fire. And we are those little, those little sparks that when they all come together, that's what's necessary to make the whole fire. So I think to, to Tim's question also, it's like we, as a, we're like a fractal of that divine consciousness of the creative, yes. the creative energy of the world, of the universe of the all. Um, so we are the fractal. And at the same time, as individuals, we're, we're all, we are the all. And like what you're saying, Anoli, our experiences, that's what, that's what the divine, I believe, wants. It wants all these experiences because since we are all part of the divine, when we learn more about ourselves, the all, because the universe, it didn't just grow and it stops. And we got all these NASA people studying that it's still expanding. So it means the universe is still <laughs> growing. So as we grow individually, the universe also learns more about itself. You know, God, you know, the creative force learns more about itself. So it, we are we we're both like you were saying. Yeah. And I'd like to chip in here because it's also about self-fulfilling prophecies. Mm. So I have two marriages behind me, but I always expected relationships to fall apart because I never mm. expect people to love me, to love me, full stop. So you get married, but in in some somewhere, somewhere in the back of you, there is that feeling, this can't last. And eventually, so it's, it's like, eventually my by multiple just cotton on to the fact that I'm not a nice piece of work or, or whatever. It's a creating a self-fulfilling prophecy. Relationship exactly. can't last. Job can't last. We create it. I know. I get it. I created it. 
I understand that now. And so the book is a so it is about being inquisitive and open to different perspectives. It's not just about that, it's, it's just just being aware, not just perspectives, it's just being open. And you were talking about three times. If something comes at you three times, it is trying to get your attention. attention. Um, so these days, something comes at me twice. It's just like, okay, what am I meant to be paying attention to? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it, so it is, it is the openness. Um, and so, yeah, and so, yes, for me, a lot of things can happen in our lives as self-fulfilling prophecies. Mm -hmm. We expect that to happen and we make it happen. And it's encouraging ourselves to feel better about ourselves that we can actually change that otherwise that spiral is just going to keep going and going yeah i was thinking about when you're saying that sarah jane so i had the two previous times and i obviously was like i don't know what else to do and i just left it and then the third time the spiral showed up i literally got swallowed by it so so that that's an example of what you're talking about so be careful yeah, it's you just... don't want to get swallowed by it by your thing. This is a perfect segue, Linda, for you to talk about how the spiral relates to the medicine wheel. Oh, well, the spiral is the medicine wheel and we go. are we are the medicine wheel. And and what what that means is how I was saying before, how we are fractals of the divine consciousness of the divine energy. So that energy is what created us. And it was really interesting if um, you guys get a chance. I think his name is Dr. Gelliman. He's out of Romania, I believe. He did a really great presentation for the Vesica.org, their recent um, conference. And he showed how in, in when the the ovum is uh, fertilized, how the it's the spiralar energy that starts creating all the, the different divisions of the cells. And then even when the, the baby is forming in the womb, the fetus is forming in the womb, you have all these spiralar energies and it's so beautiful. So um, yeah, the, the spirals, spirals everywhere. And so. And so I. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I also work with um, uh, uh, Elder uh, Lynch Archuleta in out mm -hmm. of uh, Arizona, um, one of the well-respected elders of Yaqui Indian, and he always shared with me that we can divide our bodies into the medicine wheel, yes. so that the north would be the top part of our body, the south would be the lower half of our body, and to the um, right would be the east, and to the left would be the west. So yes. that you actually are creating that medicine wheel. So for those of you who are not familiar with the medicine wheel, yeah, when you we stand... see it as red, yellow, black, and white. We see it as yeah. east, west, south, and north. Um, it has many, many overlays to the medicine wheel. Actually, the medicine wheel is infinite, okay? We can go north, south. I, I said uh, we can go spring, summer, winter, fall. You know, we can overlay literally everything well, all the way down to the consciousness. Go ahead. Yeah, well, I, yeah, exactly. Well, what the the largest physical representation of the medicine wheel with our body is if we stand and can't really do it right here because I got a wall next to me. But if you stand like a giant T and then you pretend like your head is extending out to infinity and your feet are extending right. out, you create four quadrants with your body and the thing that's in the center is your heart. And so that that's that's really that's beautiful the there. So so that's a large example of the embodiment of the medicine wheel. And one of the things actually when I was doing my my dissertation that I learned is that East to west is the path of balance. And what's amazing is that what do you have on the east west side of your body? You have your ears, you know, that helps you balance. But I also learned that without having your peripheral vision, you couldn't balance either. So it's really interesting how we represent that path of balance on our east west sides. And then the path of imbalance is the north to south, because as when we're walking, we're constantly looking down or constantly looking up because you, you don't want to walk like looking up because you might fall in a hole. Or if you kind of walk down, you might hit your head on a tree. So there's a constant they're constant shifting between looking forward and looking where you are, looking forward, looking where you are. So that makes a path of imbalance. So so we we embody it in, in our physical structure as well. And as you said, it goes down deeper into like our, our, our heart is a, is a spiral as well. And it's a, it's a giant muscle that's 
the way it's wrapped, it spirals around and creates like these double chambers with the central core, which is really beautiful. And then that goes all the way down into our DNA as well. We have fourfold structures of the spiral in or the medicine wheel in our DNA as well. So it's really yes. amazing. Yes. So Sarah Jane, this might be a good time to take that third question if you want to look at it or. Um, right. Okay. So that, that was this. So it's about being inquisitive, but actually he added after that. Um, so as opposed to reaching zero, whoops, now he's added something else. <laughs> <laughs> Slow down, Tim. <laughs> okay. okay, there was. So, so as opposed to reaching zero with fractals, um, we are growing with the fractals. But then now he's just added. So how do we get our consciousness to embody the spiral through meditation? observation they were question marks at the end of those two <laughs> i'm gonna let anolia take a stab at this one first because she leads these beautiful meditations and then i'll 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 add what i know no and meditation is meditation is absolutely one of the ways one of many ways that we emb we embody the spiral because what you're doing is that you're bringing your focus and your consciousness into your heart space and just as you projected or or just stated linda is that your heart space is the center of that that medicine wheel and it is the spiral so we enter in through our hearts and we project out through that north south mm -hmm. east west in expansion okay mm -hmm. And so when we find peace, so think of it like um, electrical circuit, right? In electrical circuit, what you want is the least resistance. When you have resistance, it can't flow. Fire. The energy can't flow. Electrical right? fire. <laughs> electrical fire, chaos in our lives, discord in our lives. But when you have the least path of resistance, which is what meditation introduces, is calming down the fire, calming down the chaos, bringing yourself into peace, then the energy flows. And then I'm going to even go into the Kundalini. So if you ever, you, if you understand what the Kundalini is, the Kundalini comes from the base of our spine all the way up through the top of our head. And it is like that electrical flow that goes up and down our bodies. Okay. So that flow starts, right? And that's within us. And then we have our meridians and our meridian points are what introduces us and, and connects with our chakras. Okay. So these are all of the parts of our body that are the unseen. We know that it's there. We know that it exists and think of it like the wind. You don't see the wind, but you feel it. You know, when it's present, when it's angry, you know, when it's present, when it's light and, and, and you, you feel the tingling on your skin. Okay. It's always there and it's constant, but it's unseen, but we know that it's there. And it's so is the same with the meridians, the chakras and the Kundalini of our bodies. That is our energy centers. We, we physically see the neurons that carry the energy. We physically see the spider web of neurons and nerve endings and everything else that carries the energy. So we have to trust that the energy flow is there. And that's why you feel so renewed when you're meditating. So when we're meditating, we have the least resistance. We allow the energy to flow from the Kundalini through the meridians, through the chakras to expand through our hearts. Yeah. And we're creating that spiral, that expansion, that knowing. So hopefully yeah. that, that kind of shares exactly what's yeah. taking place. And you want to add anything? Yeah. I'd like to say something. So I'd like to kind of piggyback off the comment that Sarah Jane said before, and I think you said also, Anolia, it's like when you keep seeing recurring themes in your life yeah. and you keep having that chaos, and like you said, this this fire from you know having the same themes coming around and around, and you mentioned, Anolia, you have to stop and say, what's your responsibility in that? For me, it's like I have to figure out where am I, like what you were saying, N not just – not not just the responsibility but where am i meaning the me the inner me because i think what the spiral is about it's it's taking you back to who you are because that mm -hmm. meditation i believe it, it's trying it's it's a tool for helping you reconnect with your true self because when you're disconnected from yourself you're going to have those chaos. You're going to have like new bosses, new bosses, and they don't like you, all this kind of stuff. You're going to have these recurring things, but it's oftentimes it's because 
the first responsibility you have is with yourself. Are you being who you truly are? Or are all the things that happened in your life, are, are, have they like piled on you and they've told you like you're this other person? Let's say, you know, they're like, oh, you're going to like blue, but you've always liked purple. It's kind of close to blue, but you really prefer the purple, but you've made yourself kind of convinced yourself that you like blue. So you're almost who you are in terms of acknowledging what you really like, but you're not really. So until you can say, no, blue is a second, it's a second best to what I really like or who I really am. And I'm like, I'm gonna just say, purple's not the one I want. It's pretty, then it has blue in it, but I really want the blue. Oh wait, was it the other way around? I forgot which way I was going. <laughs> I forgot which way I was going, but you get my point. You have to really be honest and go with what you truly want. And, and I think that's what those spiraling lessons, those repeating lessons are trying to point to you like, hey, you're almost, who you say you really are or who you really are, but you're not quite there yet. And and that's what I think. And then the meditation helps you to recognize that. But in the everyday, when you're walking and, you know, living life, if you keep seeing these themes and like one of the things I've had to learn was like, am I really like to l listen to my heart and listen to that inside? And am, am I really, am I really being me or am I kind of offset a little bit, excuse me, offset a little bit? You know, and then the lesson there has been how do what do I need to do? And then the meditation helps me to like, OK, this is what I'm be more aware of where I'm kind of off by a little bit and then come back. So, yeah, you guys chat. <laughs> I would like to sort of chip in and was it's yeah, because it got the thing. The thing he said at the end was observation. And it is because, you know, while I've been obviously listening to you talking, I've been thinking about our planet Earth. Mm -hmm. she rotates you know yeah. you get the seasons you know she is not just static on an axis exactly and you know and so we're you near know, northern hemisphere we're coming into we're, we're into we're into autumn then we'll go into winter and obviously the days are getting shorter then they will slowly get longer again you know the, the, the stars in the sky yeah, at the moment, uh, if you're in the early hours of the morning, I'm seeing Orion's reappearing in the northern mm -hmm. hemisphere. You know, I love the cycles of the moon. That everything is rotating. Yes. But take go back into nature, and you mm -hmm. think about um, ivy, me. Or, or you know, vines that creep, and especially if they like to wind themselves yes. around something yep. else. It's all creating that spiral. That spiral, and, I, and it was just like, yeah, that spirals everywhere. You talked about the chakras. That was already going through my head about the chakras because, yeah, they need yes. to spin. For well, us, you were, Sarah Jane. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, but chakras need to spin for us to be, them to be healthy yeah. in the right place, for us to be healthy. It's all about that spinning. Yeah. Exactly. Well, you, you started talking about the cosmos and you reminded me, I took notes, sorry, I, I can't get my academic part out of me. And Olya's like, it's not an academic talk, but I had to take notes because <laughs> one of the one of the things that I love about the medicine wheel, and I learned this from one of my teachers, Josephine Thomas, and she's out in uh, Tucson. Um, so I did a healing session with her. I went into her room and then each of the directions, she had the stars and the archangels. And I was like, what? So I, I learned that in the ancients, like it was like, the, here I have it on my notes, the Persians and the Egyptians to the Zoroastrians. So it was like between 5000 BCE and 1500 BCE that they had what were called like royal stars and they called them the guardians. So the way that we got directions were based on these stars because like what we were talking about, there, there's an infinite universe. And as you said, Sarah Jane, we're spiraling around not only our galaxy, but then the galaxy is spiraling around this giant universe. So it's like, how do you find where you are? If everything is infinite in all directions and even within where you're at is infinite, it's like, how, how, do, you, how do you locate yourself? And that's one of the beautiful things about the medicine wheel. It's actually a map for our inner world. And as Anolia was saying, it's like, there's the South and the North. The South holds all our unconscious 
beliefs, things we don't even know that we know, or like the, it's like, and Tim, you would like this, the, the computer programming, the, those back, those back end, I don't know, Nolan, you help me out here. Those back end programs that Program do all the servers, everything. Thank you. That do all the stuff <laughs> my computers do that you don't even know that they're doing kind of like the what's network. happening with this, this, uh, thank you. What's happening with this, this talk, you know, the, those, those are really important that that's down in the South and that's considered like the water. You know, and, and all that, like the subconscious waters, like if you get into psychology and then over to the West, that's the place of transformation because that's where the sun sets. It goes from one day to the next day and things transform. And then the North is the knowledge. And, and someone once shared with me that you can think of that as like as we get older and, and no, I don't have any. <laughs> I'm being sarcastic there. <laughs> the grays that represent knowledge. So it's like the the mountain peaks. That's the knowledge, and then you go to the east, and that's the that's the sun. But just for people that are curious, I have my notes. So the uh, the star that marks the east is Aldebaran, and that means the follower because it followed the Pleiades, and then that is in the constellation of Taurus with the vernal equinox. So yes. it's it's starting to create um, directions. And oh my gosh, probably kill this name, but it's Fomalhaut. It was Arabic for mouth of the whale, and it's known as the southern fish, and that's Archangel Gabriel, and that's in the constellation of Pisces Austrinus. So again, we're using the stars, we're using the cosmos to orient ourselves. It, create, it creates a map. And what's really cool about this particular um, constellation star, the Fomalhaut, as you mentioned earlier, Enolia, these actually, this star has actually been known to connect with um, the Bighorn and Moose Mountain Medicine Wheels in Wyoming, and actually one in Canada, mm. the Sas, oh my gosh, Saskatchewan, or sorry, Canada. Saskatchewan. Thank you. <laughs> it connects with that, it connects with that medicine wheel oh, also. My grandmother. Thank you. <laughs> and then, uh, and then on Terrace, that one is, is Greek. That is known, it's Greek meaning opponent to Mars, but they often call it the heart of the scorpion. And that's Archangel Uriel, which I think, and that's, uh, the, uh, the autumnal equinox. And then the last one is Regulus, which is known as Prince or Little King. And it's known as Alpha Leo. And that's with Archangel Raphael and he marks the summer solstice. So, so the ancients used, the stars to create a map and then the medicine wheel reflects that. So as like I was saying, we're spiraling because that's all that energy in the universe and the motions. Um, and even within ourselves, like when we breathe, we have turbulent flow and then it gets laminar flow, but all these, every, everything in within our body is spiraling. But the stars, part of the medicine wheel, it helped to give us direction so that we're not just, you know, kind of like in gravity when what's it, poor George Clooney gets, lost on space that's how we would be without without direction so thank you spiral and exactly. medicine wheel so that we can spiral but still have a direction <laughs> but the one beautiful thing that we noted and you actually mentioned this earlier linda about the spiral is that okay. when you come to the center there's peace yes and mm -hmm. so if you think of the eye of the storm you're in mm -hmm. all of this turbulent chaos from the winds of the storm but when you come into the eye of the storm there's peace mm -hmm. so you have all of this going on in your body but when you come to your heart the center of the spiral mm -hmm. there's peace yeah. so i think that that is really really the the fundamental lesson learned in the spiral is that mm -hmm. you can go through all of your turbulent ways you can fight it you can resist it you can go with the flow you can surrender to it but the key is to come to the center. Yeah. And once you get to the center, center, find your peace. Yeah. Find your peace. And maybe that's the purpose of life is to find your peace. Yeah. You know? So one other thing I want to introduce in terms of a topic, and um, Linda, when I met you, this is what fascinated me the most about mm -hmm. you, is you applied you. <laughs> the medicine wheel to engineering. Yes. And, and I've never heard anyone apply the medicine wheel to how to do engineering. Yeah. So if you could just, you know. Yeah, sure. I'm just thinking uh, it was everything you said before. It was so I had done all my qualitative, which is kind of like interviews, like all that surveys stuff, you know, get opinions. So I done that qualitative research and then did the quantitative, which is like, you know, counting the beans kind of stuff. And so I was supposed to get all this data and then I, I was supposed to make a picture 
draw a picture <laughs> of like how all this data relates. So when I when I got all the data down to like about a thousand data points, I'm looking at this data and I'm like, literally like that, like, uh, <laughs> like I didn't know what to do with it. I'm like, uh, I'm like, I'm like, how do I draw a picture with a thousand points of data that all relates? I was like. Like, yeah, like that, <laughs> I didn't know what to do. <laughs> so, so at that point I, I, I was like, help. Like I was pretty desperate and then it clicked in me and I was like, I got my Mesa that that's like a, like a representation, like kind of like a medicine bundle for North American traditions. It's a Mesa's uh, for South American traditions for the Caro. And I opened it up and it has stones in there that you that you gather for different experiences that you have in your life, different lessons that you've learned. Each of those stones helps you. So I opened my Mesa. I created sacred space because I only wanted good vibes, good, good things coming in. And I, I, I was already having trouble. Don't need like any 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 uh, trickster, uh, you know, spirits being like, hey, 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 we're going to like mess her up on our dissertation. I was like, no, thank you. I didn't need that. So I opened the Mesa and I and I. And I did a journey and, and I and I requested in a very humble but kind of pathetic way too. I was like, help me, <laughs> please. <laughs> and, and, no, seriously, it was like that. And uh, and I asked for an image, a, a drawing, something to be downloaded. And I asked for it in my dreams because, you know, being left brain, like I said, you said no notes, but I, I, I couldn't help myself. I had notes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to, like, break away from that. Um, I asked for it to be left brain, I mean, sorry, right brain, and in my dreams so that the left brain would get out of the way. I didn't want any um, critical, like, opinions or judging or anything like that, which, and that linear type of thing that is dominant by the by the left brain. I wanted simply the the, the right brain. And um, so I had, the, I had the dream that night, and I had the image, you know, the next morning, and it was about 75% done. And then what I realized as I was putting the data together is that I – I had four quadrants, and it was based on Ian Lungold. You can look up his video on uh, on YouTube. It's about how the Mayan calendar works, and he divided it into four to four sections. There was attention, intention, integrity, and intuition. And as I started looking at my data, where there were death of workers or sick workers, I was like, "That's what needs attention." Because so I was looking at long-standing health concerns of construction trade workers. So it's like, "Whoa, that's a lot to put into a medicine wheel." But it related to the path of balance and path of imbalance. So the things that were out of balance were on one path, and the things that were in balance were in another path. And then I was able to organize the data showing, and it created a like it was what I call like a construction universe. It was like a mandala, and that showed me that rather than look at things linearly like we do in the West where you have gaps and sometimes I don't know if you're trying to get up a ladder you might put your foot through the rung um, this thing it, it showed it was more of a mandala so it showed relationships between things so if I affect you know, let's say data point three it affects data point 25 also because on the on the the mandala they were next to each other whereas if they were in the Western linear space they would be like three and 25. They're like far apart, so you wouldn't know the relationships. So, so it kind of was by, um, I don't want to say accident, because I purposely did the journey. And, and I think I was led there, honestly, because when I initially started, I, I wanted to study like sustainable structures and I wanted to understand how did the ancients do sustainable structures so that we can bring that forward. So, talk about spiral, bring from the past and bring it forward. But that's not what my professor asked me to do. And, and so he said, study longstanding health concerns of construction trade workers. And I'm like, well, how am I going to like do indigenous, like indigenous perspective on that? You know, and then I ended up actually having something more beautiful because it's a tool that you can apply to things, which is really, like I said, looking at where you have balance and imbalance and you can apply it to your life. Where do you have balance in your life? Where do you have imbalance in your life? You know, where are you paying too much attention to one thing and not enough to another and what's the suffering? So how is that taking you away from your center? So I got to see how the the paths of the imbalance and balance, it, it, it relates to us as well and we can sort of have our life if you want and be like a mini data <laughs> collection you know wh where am I where, where am I doing too much and where am I not doing enough and, and I was actually thinking last night I, I've, I've been doing this for myself when I look back where I felt like where where did I feel the healthiest in my life and what was I doing at that time so I realized I was walking more I was eating like healthier if I was hungry I'd make sure I had snacks in my bag that kind of thing so I started 
going back to when I felt strongest and healthiest and like, what was I doing then that I'm not doing now? And then I'm, I'm bringing those things back into my life now. So I'm using that, those quadrants of the medicine wheel, you know, where am I li living in integrity in my life and where am I kind of, maybe I'm off a little for myself, you know, where am I using my intuition or where, where am I like, I'm hearing the little voice, but I'm like justifying it away. Cause my left brain is like, no, 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 kind of thing. So I'm, I'm, being more observant of myself, and that's thanks to applying the medicine wheel to, to to data that I didn't even think could be applied. So honestly, it was because I was desperate <laughs> at first because I had a deadline. I was like, oh my God, and I'm like, I need higher power, I need help. Um, so that that's how it ended up happening. But there had been the intention to integrate indigenous wisdom from the beginning, but what was so beautiful is that spirit had a different idea how it would manifest than what I was thinking. So that was, that's kind of how it happened. It was desperation. <laughs> well, I give in, because when I work with people, it's very much a matter, and I work with sound energy, so it's, you know, and definitely, but it's just like helping people to reconnect with their inner child, with a hurt, traumatized aspect of themselves. And sometimes I say to people, okay, sort of, there may be something they would like to look at. And it's just like, well, sometimes what we need to do is trust that it's not something what's important to us and what is important to our higher self, our healing process and whatever, can be two totally different things. But by dealing with the one that our higher self healing process wishes to us to do first, which could be much further back, Mm -hmm. We actually help to heal and bring, bring a more comfortable, better state to that aspect that we think is the priority. And so it goes back to what you were saying about 3 and 25 being connected, but it didn't doesn't look like it if you're, you're looking at a straight line yeah. rather than looking at a spiral. So higher self, body, healing process. You can come up with any sort of name you like knows where the root cause is that can support the the whole process of getting you to feel happier, com more comfortable, more in heart space. Yeah. Um, and so when you, as you were talking about it, and I was thinking, that makes so much sense because your body, whatever's going on within the spiral within you, it knows where the root cause is and those bits are connected but they aren't in our perspective of straight lines exactly so that then there's is the spiral moving in one direction if so what happens if the spiral goes in the opposite direction chaos is what came to mind <laughs> <laughs> well you know it's interesting i i learned um, somewhat recently, I guess within the last year or two. Um, and, and I love this because it makes a lot of sense that if it goes clockwise, and I think this works in the northern hemisphere because I think when you go um, south, like your toilet flushes the other way, so kind of have to flip it, <laughs> same thing. So when it's going clockwise, it's going mm -hmm. spirit to matter, so you're, you're manifesting. And then when it goes clock counterclockwise, it's matter to spirit. And I relate that. I, I know I mentioned earlier when I the first time that I did the medicine wheel, they had us walk around nine times and I didn't ever really understand what that was about. But through the Inca Chicana and the Inca worlds, because the Inca, they have three levels. They have the upper world, they have the middle world, and then they have the lower world. And so each of those is comprised. If you ever look at the Inca Chicana, it's got like those little steps, which is another example of, of the spiral or the medicine wheel. Each of those steps has um, spirit, like a spirit dimension, has a thought dimension, and then it has a material dimension. So when you're going spirit to matter, that's where you're, you're asking for something to manifest. So your words, you were saying your thoughts and, and where, your, where your intention, your spirit is, that's like I, I like to look at like water condensing on a glass so as you see water like well, you don't really see water vapor um unless it's foggy but anyway i'm getting the details <laughs> stay out of the weeds <laughs> um, <laughs> um the the water vapor is going like even right now there's water 
vapor in front of me, but I don't see it because it's moving really fast. But as the conditions change, then it becomes a little more solid. And then finally, like on a hot summer day in Arizona, you'll see the water condense on the glass. So that's coming from, you can think of it like spirit to the thought, to the manifestation in the physical world. So yeah, it, it, it can reverse. And I don't think it's necessarily like good or bad. It, it, I think it's what your intention is. What do you want? You know, what do you want from it? You know, because you, you may want to put something into the divine. Like when we do a despacho, you're putting things into the universe. You're changing the song that's playing in the quantum space so that when you ask for something, then it can manifest back. So there's there's always like this this two way communication. And the um, indigenous have known this forever. I'm going to comment on my my necklace given to me by Tom Abernathy. Tom Thomas Zajic of the Abernathy, okay? And this beautiful gift that he gave me is a spiral, and the spiral is sectioned here from spirit to matter, me being the matter. But on the reverse side, okay, the actual spiral is from matter to spirit, and the reverse is what you keep in next to your heart. We've always, as indigenous, known this and the teachings have always been there it's us remembering like we talked about before and understanding and 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 um embracing those traditions that are, that are very very significant to us so yes yes a, a, across the board and then what is your intentions you know because if your intentions are negative that's what you're going to draw to you and that's mm -hmm. what's going to come from you and yeah. if your intentions are beautiful and 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 um balanced because we strive for balance, then that's what you're going to draw to you. And that's what's going to come from you, you know? So the symbolism, like um, Sarah Jane said earlier, is from every culture. We, we, yeah. we, every culture has embraced the spiral, you know? Every culture has used the spiral. And it's just a remembering of that symbolism and, and how, to, how to embody it. Yeah. yeah? Absolutely. I think we're drawing to a close here, aren't we? Is, Nindra, is anything more you would like to add to do? The, do you think that we've missed? <laughs> um, well, I think I just want to close with one with one thing is that, as Anoli was saying, every culture has a representation of the medicine wheel. And that's because we all are we all are different. So we when we have an experience we express it differently but it's all coming from the same from the one and that's from what's so one. beautiful from the one so you may see all these different representations but they all mean the same thing it's just each person has had a different experience each culture had a different experience with the energy but i, I love what you said and only sarah jane it's all about observing and figuring out where the balance is and what your intention is and so that that's what you're going to create in there so yes thank you Brilliant. Thank, thank you, Linda. Thank you, Anolia. And I should thank say thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Tim. <laughs> thanks, Tim. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Very definitely been a, a part of this conversation, even if not vocally. <laughs> yeah. We are back again on the 20, uh, 28th of October. We're going to be doing Befriending Your Shadow Side. And we're going to be joined by Life Mastery Coach David McLeod, who's an old friend of mine. Yes, I've met him. I may live in England. He may live in the US. Um, but uh, we met at a messenger summit um, in 2012. So we've known each other a while and met our guests on each other's programs quite a bit. <laughs> Bless <laughs> um, So, yeah, we, we keep in touch. So I hope you will join us for that. Um, it's been Brilliant, folks. Thank you very much. Wonderful conversation. I hope those of you, other than Tim, who's been with us, <laughs> have enjoyed it as well. Everybody else has been quiet. And Tim keeps saying thank you and bye. <laughs> so thank you. Thank, thank you very much, folks. And hey, before we go, so much. Sarah Jane, um, Linda, why don't you just tell us about Whole Earth, Whole Earth Engineering, how you can oh. be contacted if anyone wants to follow up with you and um, a little okay. bit about Whole Earth so you can sum that up. 
Okay, thank you. Well, Whole Earth Engineering is a nonprofit that I founded where I integrate STEAM, which is science, technology, engineering, art, and math into indigenous ways of knowing, indigenous outcomes. And right now, my main project, I'm working with the CARO out in Peru. We're helping them create an online portal so they can do ceremonies online since the COVID's really impacted the community. And we're looking for ways to integrate technology because there are a lot of the newer generations, younger generations, they're, they're they're, they're having to leave their community, so they want to maintain a connection to their spirituality, to their tradition. So Whole Earth Engineering focuses on helping, you know, indigenous youth maintain those connections and, and come up with creative ways to use today's modern applications to, to do that. And they can find me on the web, wholeearthengineering.org. And do that. I have my contact information on there, so please feel free. You know, we're always accepting donations, and uh, we're we're doing a project with Expressions of Humanity as well to generate money to to get some laptops because a lot of the the young students there, at least the the young Caro that are in the city that can access internet because that would be a whole nother project. So if anyone's interested in helping us figure out how to get some access to the young for the young community up in the up in the mountains because they were literally the second tallest peak in the world. So we have some logistical challenges with this, but that's what's exciting about it. We get to use our creativity and it's collaborative through the community. We don't just come in and be like, well, you know better. No, we, we work with the community and find solutions that the community is like, yes, we want that. And then we work with them. So we take their lead. So please, you can find me on the internet and send me an email or send me a text message, however you want, and we'll be more than happy to talk with you guys. So thank you so much. Thank Karen, you. If you're watching this live, the back in that website address link is on the About Us page of the Gift of Healing TV dot com, uh, where Linda's bio is. And if you're now watching the recording because it's up on YouTube, um, certainly from the Gift of Healing TV perspective, I will make sure that it is underneath the recording of the video so that you can connect with Enolia, Linda, you know, Gift of Healing TV. Go and find you know, the information. It's all there for you. So, you know, it's all there, put there for you. Thank you, folks. Thank it's you. Real pleasure. Thank you. Thank Take you. care. Be safe. Thank you, thank you Linda. Bye. Thank you, Sarah oh, Thank Jane. you, Enolia. Thank you, Sarah Jane. I appreciate it. Namaste, it folks. Fun. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>